Welcome to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne Kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne will teach you how to do this through building high self esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness, as well as other useful free gifts for you. In this episode of Claim Your Excellent Life, we are going to speak about how not to be hypnotized. Because in this day and age, we are hypnotized all the time, and we do not even realize it. How does this happen, you may ask? It happens because we live in a society where we watch the news right before we go to bed at night and right before we wake up in the morning and sometimes while we're having our breakfast. And the problem with that is that we're in something called a hypnagogic state, which means you are hypnotized, basically. Which means that all the negative information that comes in from the news is going to go straight into your unconscious mind. And that's why a lot of people become very anxious and they don't even realize it because the news is full of negativity. That's right. So my suggestion for you is to stop watching the news right before going to bed or first thing in the morning. If you have to catch your news, do it during the day when you're not in a hypnotized state. Second, We know that when people are in a heightened emotional state, they are also in a hypnotic state. This is why a lot of times when parents come home from very busy, maybe aggravating days and yell at their kids, not meaning to, but that's what happens sometimes when people are upset and they come home, they take it out on those that they live with, and they might create a problem for that kid who then takes that negative information into their unconscious mind and feels that maybe they're unworthy of love or something of this nature. God knows I have plenty of clients who fall under that circumstance, regardless of the age. So let us be very careful about how we deal with other people and also for ourselves, because I can tell you this too. Advertisers are really good at using heightened emotions in order to get us to buy those things that we didn't need until we saw these advertisements over and over and over again. Do you understand that it is through repetition that information goes into our unconscious minds as well? And that is why the advertisers have to show the information repeatedly to get us to purchase things. So I want you to become very aware of the fact that there's many times in our community that we can be in a hypnotized state and we don't even realize it. Another one that I'll share with you is when you go to trainings or workshops. Maybe they're a couple hundred dollars or maybe even free. And what it really is is a taste of what this person has to offer for teaching the participants some sort of marketing or, I don't know, even hypnosis, whatever, so that they have the opportunity to upsell to sometimes tens of thousands of dollars in workshops, trainings, and masterminds. And they do this quite on purpose because they realize that in the heat of the moment, i.e. heightened emotional state, which equals hypnotic state, it's going to be much easier to sell the stuff that they have to the audience live when they are in this state than if they try to do it online or in any other various method of advertising. And I know for a fact, from my own experience, I was caught up in this years ago. I paid for a lot of trainings that I really could not afford on the credit card, and I had to get a refund. It was not fun, but at least I was able to do so. And later on, when I had the money and the time to do the trainings, I bought them one by one. So we need to be really aware of these things. Another time when people can be hypnotized is really in church or temple. When the minister or the rabbi is sitting there having you get up and get down and how they fluctuate their tonality, especially the preachers who are really good at storytelling 
and really good at getting those emotions going. Trust me, there's a reason why a lot of these preachers are able to make a lot of money, and that's why. And I'm talking about the televangelist people in particular. Politicians are other people that are really good at being able to put people in a hypnotic state. I know for a fact that Bill Clinton learned how to do neurolinguistic programming in his speaking to the people, I believe from Tony Robbins himself, and that is how he was able to do as well as he did, regardless of the terrible things, at least from my opinion, that he got himself involved with on the more personal aspect of his life during his presidency. So we are really, truly susceptible to being hypnotized without even knowing it. So the way to keep yourself from being susceptible to the hypnosis in the environment is just to be aware of the types of places and people that are using this to get the masses to do what they want them to do. And if you're aware of it, you most likely are not going to be subjected to any kind of hypnosis that you do not want to be involved with. It's a matter of being very careful about how you interact with other people, being careful about the information that you allow into your subconscious mind, and knowing that you have control over that to the degree that you turn off the TV and the internet when these things arise, to know that you want to stay away from negative people who are constantly complaining about what is going on in this world, and instead spend your time with positive, proactive people who are doing things that truly matter in this world. Make sure that your mind is open to the ways that you can make this world better for your having been here instead of being used up by the world. And that means getting involved in those things that are of interest to you. It means doing those things that are fun, that are not where people are brainwashing you, i.e. hypnotizing you, into doing things or believing things that you do not want to do. In fact, one of the things that I'm very clear about, especially where younger people are concerned, is the need to learn how to do critical thinking. I wish the elementary schools did a better job of teaching this other than just doing memorization for their tests that are really there to test the teachers on how well they're teaching the students. However, college is a place where people learn how to do critical thinking so that they can, in fact, think for themselves instead of being like the lemmings, you know, the one who is in the front, in the lead, with all the rest of them following him off the cliff to their deaths. Seriously, that's what is kind of like living in our society today if you do not own your own mind. So you can own your own mind. You just have to make a decision to be very careful and very practical with what you allow into it. And that means, really, to not be in those environments where you are likely to be hypnotized without really realizing it. Also be aware of the fact that there are people in your world who may be telling you things over and over and over again so that you will do what they want you to do. No. The way that you handle that is you stay away from those folks. Because again, with repetition, people are more likely to fall victim to what we call brainwashing, which is a form of hypnosis. It truly is. It is really how the cults get their people involved in what they're doing, and then they shut them off from the rest of the world so they're stuck in that little space. Seriously, it's a form of hypnotizing as far as I'm concerned. So be aware. Take control of your own mind, most especially your unconscious mind, so that you know what you are doing and that you are doing only those things that are of interest and importance to you and let other people deal with the ramifications of not understanding how they're being manipulated in this world every day just by the everyday interactions that they're going through. As always, I thank you for spending your time with me. Till next time. If you have enjoyed Claim Your Excellent Life, we'd really appreciate it if you go over to iTunes and give it a five-star review. 
If you have found Claim Your Excellent Life to be helpful to you, and maybe even life-altering with the information that we have shared here, and to allow us to continue this work, which we really do enjoy doing for you, you can sponsor us at patreon.com. That's spelled P as in Paul, A-T-R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com. Again, that's P as in Paul, A-T as in Tom, R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com. Where there's a few different levels of sponsorship that you can choose from to help us to continue doing this work. We thank you for any assistance that you are able to give us. Thank you for listening to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne teaches you how to do this through building high self-esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self-esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness as well as other useful free gifts for you.